Hi, I'm Michael Ohanian, Client Technology Specialist from Dell, and today I'm here to review the S2725DS. It is a 27-inch IPS display with QHD resolution and 100 Hz variable refresh rate. But before we dig into the review, I do want to mention I do work for Dell. Uh, however, this is my own YouTube channel. If I say something wrong, I own it. That is on me. And any opinions I give are the opinions of myself, not necessarily of Dell. So who's this display for? What's the primary user for this? Home, right? This is a great home monitor. If you want to hook your home PC to it or your notebooks, 27 inches is an excellent uh, size. It's great resolution and, and it packs some performance, which I'll talk about uh, in a little bit. Also, college student, going off to college, this is wonderful. And I'll get into uh, why the technologies are there that are really beneficial to college students. Uh, if I'm a home office worker, uh, excellent point, freelancer would be a, a great category as well. If you're an enterprise, a, a corporate customer or say government uh, or K through 12 higher ed, I would more recommend the commercial line of products such as the U-series Ultra Sharps or the P-series or the E-series displays would be more uh, for that enterprise uh, customer. So let's dig into the display. Well, and uh, open it up. All right, and let's take a look to see what we've got. I'm gonna go ahead and open the box. And the first thing we're gonna notice, uh, we've got instructions of how to assemble um, the display. Now this is uh, my first time doing a review of our uh, consumer class displays. Usually I do our, our uh, enterprise class. Um, but when I'm looking at this, it looks very similar to the setup. And that's one really nice advantage of Dell, how easy it is to set up the display. So we've got these IKEA type instructions, you know, no words on it, just pictures and how to do it. Um, if I take a look in here, we've got, this appears to be the base uh, of, the, of the system. Yep, it is the base. I'll throw this to the side. And you can see it's got a, um, it's a kind of thumb screw. So you really don't need a screwdriver, though you could use one. It's got a nice thumb screw that, that goes on there. So I will pull up next the stand. Um, kind of nice. Uh, looks like it's got a lot of ergonomics to it. It has some uh, uh, cable management here. So I'll, I'll go and do the logical thing of, of putting it into the base. And you can see all I'm using is just my, my fingers on this thumb screw. And there we go. So the first part of it is is all set. Um, probably should be following instructions, but <laughs> that's not like me. I like to just dig in and uh, start putting stuff. So this here um, attaches to the display. You can see here uh, it has a, a VESA mount. This is a uh, 100 by 100. So if you wanted to take this monitor and actually mount it to say like a radial arm or something like that, you can. Uh, but this is a quick uh, release mount for that. And if I look in the instructions, it appears I, I put these on it again. This has a thumb screw um, as well, which is, which is really nice. Because again, I don't need screwdrivers to get this in. So I simply put it on the base here and start screwing that in until it feels tight. Yeah, okay. That's tight, and I'll push that back in. And what do we got here? Hmm. Not sure. Oh, it's a cover. Okay, it's a cover, so we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, other things in the box besides the legal requirement documents, um, you do have a um, HDMI and the uh, power cable that comes included uh, with the with the system. So we'll kind of throw that to the side here. I will pop this out. Uh, and underneath here, you'll see, and I'll put this up, you can see the display. And it's, you know, well nice and, and uh, protected, but what's nice is I don't have to pull this thing out of the box um, and then try to get it on the monitor. I you know, talked about these quick mounts here. These are really nice. I love how we do this, but I simply just put it into, so you can see these two little hooks here. I'm gonna put it head first into, there's gonna see two slots in there, and I'm just gonna push it down and you'll hear it snap. Once that snaps, I can pull the display out. 
it was that simple, right? I'm going to take the cover off, and here you go. I will throw this piece down as well, so you can see, you know, the full size of the display. 27 inches is really nice. I, I, to me, I get to play with monitors all the time. Um, one of my favorite sizes is 27. I think when you go to below a 27, it's just not a whole lot of uh, real estate space. Uh, with the 27, um, you can split this into two displays. I um, mean, it comes with the Dell Display Manager that allows you to carve up the display any way you want. Um, I do want to show you real quick Dell Display Manager. Um, one thing about the application is it comes with the cost of your display, so there's no additional charge for it. You just need to download it uh, from Dell.com. Uh, other thing uh, is you don't necessarily have to have a Dell PC. Right? You can have an HP, a Lenovo um, some other um, PC. Uh, there's even a Mac version of it. So for, for my Apple friends, um, you can use this as well. But you can see over here, I've got uh, the uh, Dell Display Manager running and it recognizes the uh, Dell S2725 DS here. And um, I have something called e Easy Arrange and this allows me to carve up the display in anything I, any way I want, right? I can keep it as, as one display. So if I have one display, let me bring something like this over to here and you can see I've got a, you know, treats it as a, as a single display. If I want to make it say side by side, two displays, I simply can connect this and you can see these orange bars that, that popped up here. And what's nice about that is if I bring that application back up again, or that website and say, Hey, I want to segment it to one side. You can see the yellow turns into green. And that tells me where it's going to plant. So now it's it's set there. Now let me grab something else. I can grab, you know, it doesn't have to be a website. It could be an application. But you saw it turn that that green, right? So now I've got side by side, um, perfectly perfectly set. And I can sit there and play videos while I, um, you know, you know, do homework on on the other side. Um, and it's not limited to just side by side, right? There's many different configuration cuts you can do all the way up to <laughs> seven, right? You can see bizarre settings like that or, or gosh, go even further like, like that. Um, and I don't know how much you'd practically use that as a, as a um, function of every day, but um, you certainly can do it. But most, most popular by far. Uh, is the side by side. So I uh, did want to give you a quick look at Dell Display Manager. What I will do is plug this in the display first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one, th well, one thing nice as I'm doing this. This is very ergonomic, right? You have height adjustment. So I can take it down really low. I can put it up really high. I can swivel left. I can swivel uh, right on there. I can tilt forward. I can tilt back. Um, and then I can do portrait and landscape. So this is landscape mode with most. Hey, if you're a student, you're going for um, computer uh, programming and, and design, right? Sometimes you'll want to do this in a, um, in a uh, what we call portrait mode, right? Um, as a normal user, I wouldn't do this. Um, though it looks kind of cool, um, it's a little high. Uh, to be looking up from your from your desk, but if you're writing code, this is awesome because you can see your whole list of code down here. So for computer science majors, that's a that's a, a great way to to have this display. So um, also when I'm I'm setting it up, going either way on this, uh, it does make it a little easier because now I've got very quick access to the port. So what I'm going to do is let's see. Here's the power. Make sure I get this in the right way. Now I've got the power, and what I'm going to do, um, there we go. Oh, that pops off. Very nice. Okay. So this is just a little cable management here that you can pop on and pop off so that uh, it doesn't uh, get in the way. And I can plug this in, and now I've got power to it. Now the other thing that this does have, right, is and while we're looking at the ports here, you can see... Um, two of them here. You've got a display port, full size display port, and an HDMI. I also, over here, it's kind of hard to see, I've got another HDMI. And I say, well, why would I need two HDMIs on this? Again, um, this being for the home or student, I can plug my game console on this. So I can not only have my PC connected to it, 
I can also connect a um, like a PS2 or, or a PlayStation um, to the system as well. So I can have my computer and uh, game console on it uh, at the same time. So I am going to do uh, the HDMI cable, which does come uh, with the system. And you'll kind of see how, how long this is. It's roughly six feet, I'm roughly six feet tall. Um, maybe just slightly over six feet uh, in length. And what I'm going to do is connect it in there, make sure we're it the right way. And we'll go ahead and pull off this clip again. And it's simply just kind of spread it a little bit. It's got these little kind of connectors on it. So I'll put that in. Really nice to kind of keep those cables from being all cluttered. And I'll go ahead and plug this into my laptop here. I've got a Precision uh, 30. 590 that I've got it connected to and let me tilt this up again and connect it this way and what's nice I'll show this to you on the back is the power button is on the back of the system here and what's nice about that you've got a joystick for being able to control the um, uh, the menus uh, on here but you also have the um, power on the back that you simply uh, say, show it right there. You can feel it without having to see it, and just simply will press that, and what you'll see is this is starting to turn on. Um, but as you can see, this is a QHD resolution. I really like it. You can you can tell from the quality here, it's great. Um, it does have that 100 hertz variable refresh rate uh, on that, and what that means. A typical monitor uh, has like a 60 hertz refresh rate, and a hertz is how many times the image on this display refreshes per second. So if you have a 60 hertz, uh, it's 60 times per second. If it's 100 hertz, it's 100 times per second. When you start getting into real uh, gaming, competitive gaming displays, you start getting 120, uh, heck, you even have some go up to 500 hertz, 500 re um, refreshes per second which is pretty insane, but those are more professional level gaming. This is really good for, hey, I'm a casual gamer. I want something better than a traditional 60 hertz refresh rate. Um, this will give you uh, less tearing in the display as you're, you're playing it. So a 100 hertz variable uh, refresh rate is, is great for casual gaming. Yeah, I wanted to pause and, and take a minute and explain something. Originally, when I um, recorded this, I didn't have this section in, and I went back and said, you know, I really need to talk about it. So um, one of the things that makes the um, S2725DS uh, such a great value is the quality of the image and the uh, protection that it, it brings to you. Um, it used to be real simple to pick monitors out. You basically said, hey, what size, 27 inch, what resolution? And there you made your choice of monitors. Well, now it's getting a lot more complex, right? There's a lot more to learn. The technologies are getting stronger. So I wanted to explain some of these and, and some of the capabilities that are in this display. You know, one of them is color ratings. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll see, you know, monitor has so many billions of colors and, um, you know, that's not nearly necessarily important as is to the color ratings itself. Uh, there's a chart and I'll put it up here. It's called the CIE 1931. And it is all the visible colors that the human eye can see. And what has happened over the years is mainly driven by Hollywood and the cinema industry. You know, they've kind of set what protocols are and standards that, um, you know, movies and images need to appear uh, when, when publishing them. And, um, the, you know, some of the latest ones is one is sRGB. A lot of people have heard that, but really don't understand what it is. Well, sRGB is um, this, you know, the golden kind of triangle there. And it means if you have 100%, you're seeing 100% of those colors on the display um, that are in that triangle. Uh, this one uh, comes at 99% sRGB, which is excellent. That is very close to 100% on there. Um, a lot of monitors are, are a lot lower, uh, you know, sometimes in the 45% uh, of the sRGB uh, spectrum. So this hits 99 um, you might start also here in something called DCI-P3, and that's kind of the new standard that the cinema is coming out with. It's a, um, 
It stands for Digital Cinema Initiative Protocol Number Three. Um, and it's just a bigger triangle, right? sRGB is within it. Um, it expands out and says, hey, we're going to add these colors. And so you're starting to hear um, people talk about DCI-P3 ratings um, in it as well. And then there's another protocol even beyond that, which is the REC 2020. Um, but it's really that standard to say what your monitor is. This is, I'm happy to report, you know, this is 99% um, sRGB on the display. Now, the other thing that... Um, it has been going on in, in the monitor industry, and, and, and we've been working on this for years, um, is the safety of, of the display. Um, everybody's experienced this. You, you work late, you're on the display, and um, your eyes just start hurting. They're irritated um, from looking at the display all day. And what is causing that irritation for the most part is something called uh, low blue light um, or blue light. And blue light, naturally occurring light, right? It's actually the same light that comes from the sun. It's what tells us in the morning to, to wake up when the sun's coming up. It's why our kids can't uh, sleep at night because they're staring at their cell phone that's emitting blue light and it's telling them it's, it's time to be awake, not, not asleep. Um, but it has some harmful effects because one of the things about low blue light, it's high energy and our eyes can't filter it. So it goes back uh, through the, the back of our eye. And this is what causes that irritation. Um, and for some people over time, actually causes damage to the eye. So, you know, from an industry, we've been looking at how do we make these monitors safer for our users? And the original came up with something called, you know, a software low blue light. And what it did is it filtered out a lot of the blue light out of a display. And quite frankly, it was horrible. Um, your monitor, when you turn it on, you put on the, heart, uh, the software low blue light, and it would look like it's this bluish or I say, maybe greenish yellowish uh, kind of tint to it. If you have a cell phone and it has like a night mode, put it on and you'll see what I'm talking about. That's typically a, um, a uh, hardware or a software based uh, low blue light. Well, then the technology started to change in the displays and we're able to start doing a hardware based low blue light. And what we're able to do there is say, instead of eliminating the, the, all the colors of blue, why don't we take out those sections of the frequency uh, that are damaging to our eye, but not visible uh, to the naked human eye. So we're getting, getting rid of the bad part, but keying the color blue. So from a hardware-based low blue light, the display looks the same as a non-blue light uh, display, which is great. End user would never, never recognize it. The difference being is, I now you know, don't get that irritation I used to get. I still get that same um, quality. Um, where this has kind of led to and why this is such a great deal is there is a new certification out there call it, uh, called TUV Rhineland Certification. And they really started looking at the safety of, of displays for uh, the end user, the comfort of it. Um, our hardware based blue light is called uh, Dell Comfort View and Comfort View Plus. Um, but now this TUV certification, um, you know, gives you a five-star rating, um, anywhere from a three to, to a five. And quite frankly, most uh, monitors on the market won't even qualify for a three-star rating. Uh, the S2725DS qualifies for a four-star rating um, by the Rhineland uh, certification, which basically says to get a three-star certification, you have to have above a 75 hertz refresh rate, which we talked about, we're at 100 a hertz refresh rate. Um, your hardware-based low blue light is it has to be in category three. And this is where it's getting specific because originally there's hardware-based low blue light, but nobody measured how much um, of the harmful is still allowed to come through. Uh, category two says it has to be 35% or less of harmful blue lights, which is much more stringent than the original, which I think was like 50 percent um, of the uh, harmful blue light come through. So now we're 35, very stringent, meaning this is very comfortable for your eyes. And the other thing was it has to be a minimum of 95 percent sRGB on the color scale to get that four star rating, which here we're at 99 percent. Uh, so we get that four star rating. Um, to get the five star rating, it goes a lot uh, further. That's a lot of times in our, our U-series ultra sharp monitors, uh, kind of our higher end ones will we'll get those five star. But a four star rating is absolutely excellent, especially in this price point. Um, you can rest assured this is, this is a great um, display for your eyes. Um, the other thing that I didn't uh, mention and, and what makes this, this special is something about the contrast ratio. 
And you'll hear, you know, 1,000 to 1, uh, 2,000 to 1 contrast ratios in displays. And it's like, what does that even mean? Um, what a contrast ratio means um, the contrast between a solid white and a solid black on your display. So if you contrast ratio of 1,000 to 1, that means the white um, image on there is a thousand times brighter than the black image. And the bigger that number, uh, the more, in a sense, the clearer that screen is, the more definition that you can get in images. Uh, particularly if you're playing video games and stuff like that where you've got fog and this really kind of weird color mix, uh, the better the contrast ratio, the better the image on the display. Now, most IPS black displays in the industry are a thousand to one contrast ratio. Uh, this here is 1,500 to 1. So the whites are 1,500 times brighter uh, than the blacks on the display, giving you a much better, better image altogether. So I uh, just wanted to point out those few things. So let's get back to the rest of the video. Um, other things that you'll notice is a very, very thin bezel all the way around it. Um, so very sleek. Um, and that's something that you'll, you'll notice if you start looking at uh, older monitors or, or uh, less expensive monitors out there, or cheaper monitors, they'll have kind of thick bezels around it. This is almost an infinity edge um, bezel, where it's almost, almost bezel. It's a little bit down here at the bottom, but the sides are, are definitely extremely thin on it. Um, also on the bottom, which is a great feature, it has integrated um, uh, dual five watt speakers on here. Um, you don't think about that. You know, a lot of things monitors, um, have gotten away from lately is having uh, integrated speakers built into them. Uh, again, that's one less thing you have to buy if you're having this in your dorm room or your house. Hey, I don't have to worry about plugging in, in uh, uh, speakers for it. It's, it's already built in and these sound really, really good. I was uh, listening to some of the tests um, for this display and it was excellent. Both sides here, but I want to give you an example of, of how it sounds. So let me put my, my microphone down there so you can hear it. I'll play this video and you know, I'll start with no sound and start gradually taking it up so you can hear how loud this actually gets. So. so that is a max volume. That's really uh, quality sound. Uh, another thing to talk about on this display uh, is that it is a um, one-year advanced exchange um, premium panel exchange and that really says if you just have even one bright pixel um, is found on this display so you have one pixel that's out um, they'll exchange this display for you so basically the process works you call into Dell support uh, they will send you out a replacement panel uh, with no charge to shipping, you get that box, you take the this one here, you put it back in the box, we pay for the shipping back, and then you have your replacement panel. So very easy, very convenient for you. And, and to get you how great that, that um, you know, guarantee is just one pixel, um, with a QHD resolution at 27 inch, that means there's 3,686,400 pixels in this display. Right, so only one fails, and, and you can go ahead and get a get a replacement for it. So, uh, really, really great on that that warranty. I really like that a lot. Um, and the other thing you're going to notice from back, and this is um, kind of the texture on this. It's it's a really nice look to it. I like this this white appearance, but um, we've got these kind of lines, and I know you really can't see it that well here, but as visually that as, as I can see it, you can see it looks really nice. Kind of inspired from you ever see that um, kind of like the Japanese sand raking, you know, kind of kind of Zen type of kits that you can get and rake. That's really what this is inspired on, kind of that rake uh, feel of these lines down it. So very very nice, um, nice back end to to the display itself. So that is a quick review of the Dell S2725 DS. 27 inch IPS QHD display. Again, this is Michael Ohanian, client technology specialist from Dell.